what is time in all of this? We kind of mentioned it a bunch. Um, is it not important at all in terms of, uh, is it just a word? Should we be talking about causality mostly? Like, so what do you think? Is uh, We've talked about like memories. Is that the fundamental thing that we should be thinking about? And, and time is just a useful measurement device or something like that. Well, there's different concepts of time, right? So I think in assembly theory, when we're talking about time, we're talking about the ordering of things. So that's the causal graph part. And so then the fundamental structure of the universe is that there is a certain ordering and certain things can't happen until other things happen. But usually when we colloquially talk, colloquially talk about time, we're talking about the flow of time. Um, and I guess Lee and I were actually debating about this this morning. So in talking on it, walking on the river here, which is a very lovely spot for talking about time. Um, but that the, you know, that when the universe is updating, it's transitioning between things that exist now and things that exist now. Um, <laughs> uh, that's really the flow of time. Uh, so there's, there's, you have to separate out those concepts at, at bare minimum. And then there's also an arrow of time that people talk about in physics, which is that time doesn't appear to have a directionality in fundamental physics, but it does um, to us, right? Like we can't go backwards in time. And usually we, it, you know, that would be explained in physics in terms of, um, well, there's a cosmological arrow of time, but there's also the thermodynamic arrow of time of increasing entropy. Um, but what we would say in assembly theory is that there is a clear directionality. The universe only runs in one direction, which is why some things – it's easy to make – if the universe runs in, runs in one direction, it's easy to make processes look reversible. For example, if they have no memory, they're easy to run forward and backwards, which is why the laws of physics that we have now look the way they do because they involve objects that have no memory. But when you get to things like us, it becomes very clear that the universe has a directionality associated to it. So it's not reversible at all. It's the um... – no man ever steps in the same river. I just have to bring that up because you walk yeah. on the river. No man has ever st steps in the same river twice for it's not the same river and he's not the same man. Uh, so the, it's not reversible. Any of the same. No. no, but reversibility is an emergent property, right? So we think of the reversibility of laws as being fundamental and the irreversibility as being emergent. But I think what we would say from how we think about it, and certainly it's easy to be the case for our perception of time, but also you know, what's happening in biological evolution you can make things reversible, but it requires work to do it. Mm. And it requires certain machines to run it forward and backward. And uh, Chiara Marletto is working some interesting ideas on constructor theory related to that, which is a totally different set of ideas. So you, so you can travel back in time sometimes. Yes. <laughs> you could no. reconstruct, not, you can't travel actually back in time, but you could reconstruct yeah, you travel things that have in existed time. in the past. You're always moving forward in time, but you can cycle through. Like, I, I mean, can I can- Can I clarify what yeah, you just yeah, said? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Quickly, you travel forward in time to travel back. Yes. That, thank you. That really clarifies. Well, no, what, 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 what Sarah's saying is you don't go back in time. You recreate what happened in the past, in the future, and inspect it again. So in that local pocket of time, it's as if you travel back in time. So I, I don't- How's that not traveling back in time? Because you're not going back to your same self back in time. You are you're creating that in but the future. But everything else is the same as it was in the past. No, 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 no. It's, it's not in registry. I mean, it goes back to the big question. I'm saying, I mean, this is something I I was trying to look up today when I first we first had this discussion, and I was talking to Sarah on Skype, and I said, by the way, time because time is the fundamental thing in the universe. And she almost hung up on me. <laughs> right, but but you can even I mean, if you want to make an analogy to computation, and I think Charles Bennett actually has a paper on this, like about reversible computation and reversible Turing machines. In order to make it reversible, you have to store memory to run the process backwards. That's so, point. time is always running forward in that yeah. so because the, you have to write you, you the memory. Can't erase the memory. You can erase the memory, but the point it, it, when you go back to zero, right? But the whole point is that in order to have a process that even runs in both directions, you have to start talking about memory to store the information to run it backwards. I got it. So you, you can't really then, you can't have it exactly how it was in the past. Yeah, you, exactly. You, so here's you a, have extra stuff, extra baggage always. Okay. A so. really important thing that I want to say on this, I think if I try and get it right, is to say that if you can think that the universe is expanding in terms of the number of boxes that it has to store states, right? Um, and this is where the directionality of the universe comes from. Everything comes from. You could erase what's in those boxes, but the fact you've now got so many boxes at time at now in, the, in this present, there's more of those boxes than there were in the past. See, but the boxes aren't physical boxes. They're not they, it's not they, space or time. I mean, it's, it's, so why, why is the number of boxes always expanding? 
it's very hard to imagine this because we live in space. Yeah. So what I'm saying, which is I think probably correct, is that we just let's just imagine for a second mm -hmm. there is a non-local situation, but there are these things called states, and that the universe, um, irrespective of whether you measure anything, there is a universal let's call it a clock or a state creator. Maybe we can call it this way. Maybe you can call it God, but let's call it a state creator where the universe is expanding in the number of states it has. Why are you saying it's expanding though? Is that obvious that it's expanding? It's the obvious number of because states? that's where the, because um, we, we, that's we, a source of novelty. It's a source of novelty. And it also explains why the universe is not predictable. Um, How do you know it's not predictable? Well, it's, it, it, I just like interrupting you. Um, Sorry, it's fun because um, um, you're struggling. I'm struggling because it's, but I'm trying to be as concrete as possible and not sound like I'm insane. Yeah, um, and I'm not insane. It's it's obvious because you. The, um, I'm a chemist, so as a chemist, I grew into the world understanding irreversibility. All irreversibility is all I knew, and when people start telling me the universe is actually reversible it's a magic trick we can use time to do it so what i mean is the 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 second law is um really the magical but why does it need to be magical the universe is just asymmetric all i'm saying is the universe is asymmetric in the state production and we can erase those states but we just have more computational power so what i'm saying is that the universe is deterministic horizon this is one of the reasons we can't live in a simulation by the way <laughs> the irre you can't live the, in a simulation the irreversibility Which yeah, yeah so basically every time you try and simulate the universe in this you know i live in a simulation the universe is expanded in states You're like oh damn it i need to make my computer bigger again and every time you try and contain the universe in the computation because it's got bigger in number of states and so i'm saying the fact the universe has novelty in it is going to turn out experimentally to be proof that time, as I've labeled it, is fundamental and exists as a physical thing that creates space. Okay, so if you can prove that novelty is always being created, you're saying that it's possible to also then prove that it's always expanding in the state space. Those are things that to be have to be proven that's what we're working on experiments for yeah and you're trying to like by looking at the sliver of reality show that there's always novelty being generated yeah because if we go and live in a universe that the conventional physicists would live in it's a big lookup table of stuff and everything exists i want to prove that that book is that book doesn't exist it's continuously being added pages on so all i'm saying if the universe is a book we started the, the universe at the beginning only had a, no pages and have or had one page, another page, another page. Whereas a physicist would now say all the pages exist and we could in principle access them. I'm saying that is fundamentally incorrect.